Pop Quiz. What action movie from the mid-1990s starring Keanu Reeves is one of the most underrated action thrillers of the 1990s, in my opinion? Yes. I feel the need for speed. Hello there, welcome to my world of stuff. My name is, and you may have noticed, hopefully you will have noticed if you are a regular viewer, or even if you just popped into this channel in the past, that I'm in a different location for this particular video. It's the, the latest in my retro movie review series. Uh, and in a new location, which I'm hoping will be a regular place for recording these videos in the future, although I'm not abandoning the office, I'm just having a change of scene. This is the new cinema room, which I've had, um, put together in the last two to three weeks, which is one of the reasons I haven't been posting quite as many videos because I've been dashing about sorting up builders and supervising and making cups of coffee and stuff like that. Um, but no, this is um, this is my new cinema room. It's a converted garage, basically. It's something I've always wanted to do and um, I thought it was time to do it. I've um, got the space um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's coming together quite well. There is some stuff to be done. As you can see, the walls are a bit bare at the moment. There's posters and things to go up. Um, I've got the cinema screen. Uh, it's just in front of me. I will do a video. When it's all done, when it's all finished, there's a few little cosmetic things that need to be done just to tidy the place up. And as I said, there's posters to go up and uh, a decent sound system to be bought. But things are coming together. As you can see, things are in place. The Daleks have arrived. Excuse me. The, the Daleks have arrived. Oh, God. Um, so, yeah, things are coming together. But I thought I would do a video here because I'll probably be doing a lot from here in the future. Um, I've also got a new camera, a new 4K camera. So hopefully the picture quality is going to be a little bit better. But that, of course, is subject to the vagaries of YouTube's uploading. Um, so hopefully it's all good. Uh, the sound quality uh, is probably a little bit echoey at the moment because the acoustics and things, the room has just been done. Uh, hopefully when it's a bit fuller, um, it will sound less hollow, if it does sound hollow. Uh, so anyway, that's where I am. I'm in the new cinema room. Let me know what you think of the, the backdrop. It's, it's probably not quite as police boxy as the previous one, but obviously there will be posters and things to distract you from my rather attractive features in future videos. I uh, hope you're all well, hope you're enjoying the sweltering heat, and I know I'm looking at the screen and not the camera, but what can you do? I uh, hope you're enjoying the, the sweltering heat. A few water scorcher misses. Yeah, it's been roastingly hot the last few days. Um, fortunately, I've been in the position to sort of sit with my tongue hanging out in front of a fan. Although yesterday I did have uh, a bit of, bit of work. As I mentioned previously, I do a bit of work as an extra stroke. Uh, supporting artist for film and TV things. I had a booking yesterday, which was um, something I was looking forward to, but sort of dreading at the same time when I saw what the weather was like, because it was a post-apocalyptic uh, thing, which required uh, several layers of clothing. But fortunately, we were filming indoors in a semi-derelict hotel uh, in Wales. Um, and I had to look like this. Like that. That's how I had to look. So yeah, uh, scarf, hats, coats, uh, shirt and t-shirt. So it was a little bit of a hot and sticky day, but it was a nice day. It was we were there for about five hours. Uh, it was a sort of a, it's, I think it's a pilot thing for a, a proposed uh, British-based post-apocalyptic thing called Apple. So uh, we were just filming a key scene from it yesterday with a quite a well-known uh, Welsh film and TV actor. Um, Probably can't say much more about it than that, but it was a nice fun day. So that's what I did yesterday. Um, so yeah, things have been happening and uh, I've got some more stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, I'm hoping the weather will calm down a little bit. I think we'll do a thunderstorm the next day or so. And I, for one, won't mind because I like the, the heat and the warm weather, but it does tire you out a bit. Anyway, you're not here for me blathering on. You're here for me to talk about speed. This is a... a 
4K disc, which I picked up, I think it was an HMV, it hasn't come out long ago, and it was reduced to 14.99. I thought, well, that's what I need to have in the collection. I got it on Blu-ray, and I'll be keeping the Blu-ray because the Blu-ray's got more special features than the discs here. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, revisited this. Haven't seen this for years and years and years. And as I said in the intro, I do think, having watched it again, it's, it's one of those underrated action films from the 90s that we forget, and we... Um, we forget how good it was, possibly because of the sequel, which we shall not talk of. Um, but it was such a good film. And watching it again, I haven't seen it for well over a decade, I imagine. It really hasn't dated. I mean, the action scenes look fantastic. And of course, this sort of predates the overuse of CGI, sort of practical effects and practical stunts, and so much the better for it. Um, it just looked great and it didn't feel dated. There was nothing particularly dated about it, really, in terms of the script and the action. Well, obviously, Los Angeles presumably has changed geographically since this was made. But in terms of the themes and, and the sort of the action set pieces, I think it it's really stands up well. If you've not seen it, then, uh, basically, it stars our friend Keanu Reeves as uh, LAPD officer Jack Traven. And at the beginning of the film, well, one of the things I like about the film is that I think that we, we know that it's about... Um, a bus that's sabotaged by um, a sort of a terrorist figure, ex-cop who's got a bit of a grudge, played with brilliant malevolence and insanity as usual by Dennis Hopper. Um, he sabotaged this bus so it must never uh, drop under the speed of 50 miles an hour. Um, if it drops below 50, a bomb which is planted underneath the bomb will detonate, killing everybody on board. And I think we think that that's what the film is about, and that's that is all the film is but it's not that's the core of it but there are other great action set pieces and moments of great tension and adventure before that happens i mean it opens up with um jack and his partner um harry temple played by jeff daniels as these two la pd cops who are called in to help out when an elevator full of people in a, a skyscraper is held ransom by um Howard Payne, the terrorist, he wants a three million dollar ransom and they have to go in and stop the elevator from plunging to the bottom of the shaft, killing everybody on board. It's a really tense, exciting scene, you know, it's the usual sort of thing that um, they start to execute the rescue and something goes wrong and then at the last minute it looks as if things are going to go wrong. It's a really thrilling scene and of course it, it, it ends with them thinking that they've Howard Payne has killed himself but he, he hasn't of course, he's got something bigger up his sleeve. And the film doesn't mess about at all. I mean, you get a bit of character stuff with Keanu, who I think, you know, it's not the world's best actor, but I think this is his, probably his best performance, really, um, Matrix notwithstanding. Um, he brings a bit of uh, sort of humanity to this character. We don't really know very much about, except that he is a bit of a loner, uh, a bit of a lone wolf. Um, but almost immediately, he's plunged into a chaotic situation when um, he witnesses a transit bus exploding, killing the uh, driver. And... Uh, then he he is nearby and a payphone rings. He rushes to the phone and it's Howard Payne, the terrorist, who explains that uh, another bus has been loaded with dynamite and will explode if it go, if it drops under 50. Um, luckily, he manages to isolate the location of the bus. And that's another great action scene where he hijacks a car and drives alongside the bus on the freeway trying to get on board the bus. Well, this is all before we get to the actual speed element of the film. Once he's on board the film, he meets up with Annie, who's a free-spirited uh, young student who's on the bus. Um, played, of course, by Sandra Bullock in her star-making performance. Uh, she steps up to the plate. Uh, she takes over the driving of the bus when the uh, driver's injured. And all the while, um, Keanu has to do everything he possibly can to keep the bus above 50, um, whilst his colleagues try to track down the terrorist and isolate who it is and locate him and put a stop to his antics. Um, it's terrific. It's, it's such a... It really is that expression that you hear so much roller coaster ride. But it really is. It just doesn't let up from the moment it starts practically up to the very end. And um, it's no spoiler, I don't think, if you've not seen the film, obviously. The bus doesn't blow up and Keanu saves the day. But that's not the end of the story because there's a bit that happens after that where Payne um, has another... A desperate sort of plan aboard a subway train and that leads to another extended sort of action scene at the end of the film um it, it, it's just great it's just great fun i mean it, it, you go into it knowing what it is you're not going to get a great character piece great human drama because that's not what it is it's a great action film 
but it's held up really well. I must say the performances are terrific. There you do get the slightly cheesy romantic ending where after all they've been through, um, Jack and Annie fall into each other's arms. You sort of think, oh, she could have avoided doing that. But it's a minor criticism, really, because you're here for the action and it delivers on that in spades. Um, it's directed, of course, by Jan de Bont. It's, it's his uh, feature film directorial debut. And I think probably the best film he did, to be honest. Um, highly recommended. Um, just a great old school action film that doesn't look old school. It, you know, it could stand up to today's um, crit critical eyes, I think, quite well. And as I say, I haven't seen it for years. So I was expecting to find it maybe a bit cheesy and a bit dated in places, but no, nope, not a bit of it. Uh, Speed is obviously still available on Blu-ray and DVD probably, but this is the great new sparkling 4K Destiny. It looks terrific. It looks really sharp and vibrant and uh, hugely recommended as one of the great, honestly, I do think it's one of the underrated classic action films of the 1990s because of that I gives it a great big 9 out of 10 because it was great fun right well that's me done um, thank you for watching hope this new setting is uh, palatable to you hopefully there's not quite so much background noise um, previously I was on a sort of a main road here there is, you might hear a bit of noise in the background but hopefully not quite as distracting as it has been in the past um, so let me know what you think and as I said there will be work in progress and when it's all done, I will do a special video, a video tour of the room. I mean, it's only a carriage, it's not a massive room, but I think um, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be in here. It's not going to be too cluttered, but it's just going to reflect um, my film interest and my brother's interest as well, actually, because we're sort of sharing the room, using the room quite a lot. Um, yeah, so I'll do a video probably maybe end of next week when hopefully everything will be done. I've got a few bits and pieces in order because I'm going the whole hog. I'm getting a mini fridge, a popcorn machine, little sweet dispensers. Um, it's not that I don't enjoy going to the cinema, but it'll be nice to have the big screen experience at home. I think it's something a lot of people are doing, something I've always wanted. And uh, I haven't sort of busted the bank to do it. I mean, I haven't got the acoustic walls and I haven't got, you know, the proper full sort of... Um, I haven't created a cinema as such, but it is a cinema room. Um, you'll see when I do the video, some of the lights and things are sort of cinema flavoured. So it's got the flavour of a cinema room and it looks like a cinema room and it's got, you can see the sort of alcove lights up there. Anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you've liked this video, if you like this sort of content, there will be more retro film reviews coming up soon. Then you know what to do. You know what to do. You've got to press that like and subscribe button, which is over there. Sorry. Even on this new camera, I can't figure out where it's supposed to be pointing there's a subscribe button someone just press the damn thing um like those thumbs up and leave a comment and um i'll see you soon for another video probably in the next video is going to be a review of the new m night Shyamalan film old which i'm planning to see on friday afternoon so expect a video friday evening with some more retro stuff to come so once again thanks for watching and you know what they say until next time you keep taking the stuff